Now that we've completed our prototype on breadboard, which you can see in the first video, we're going to begin the final build, starting with the transmitter. I've made some slight modifications for the final build. We're going to use a 12 volt supply and supply the RF transmitter module only with 12 volts so that it has a little more power. And we'll also need to provision a 5 volt regulator as shown in the bottom left. Okay, let's begin. Let's start by gathering up all the parts we need to construct the transmitter, including the perforated vector board, a case, and the power supply. Here we'll build this on a vector board the old fashioned way, with point to point wiring and hand soldering, and you'll notice that I'm using 30 gauge wire wrap wire to connect things together. And this is an extremely tough and durable wire and I recommend it for this kind of work. And here I'm going to connect the programming jig that I've made to the programming header. You'll need one of these little FTDI cards. I got this one from SparkFun. And there's lots of instructions on the internet on how to do this. Here's the basic wiring to the FTDI card here. So here we're ready to program the final vector board. And right now I don't have the FTDI card plugged in and we'll notice if we go to the port that we have these ports showing. Now when I plug it in, we'll see an extra port show up. And there it is, COM23. So that's the FTDI port. And uh, it doesn't show up like it normally with, would do showing the Arduino Uno board. It just shows up at that, as that extra port. So you kind of have to know that to look for that. Okay, so let's... Uh, try and program the IC with this program now. Here we go. Let's hit the upload button and you can see it's compiling the sketch and uploading and momentarily it should say uploading done if we're successful. So here it comes. Done uploading. There we go. Our, our board is programmed. Now let's go test it out. First we'll set our power supply to 12 volts. And then we'll hook up the vector board and we'll use our original receiver on breadboard to test it out. And here we can see it's starting to work. We can see the temperature coming up and I'll put my finger on here so we can see the temperature change. It's working. So now that we've got the transmitter working, let's install it in the box. First we'll add some tape to the box, mark off the vector board and drill holes, insert the standoffs, Check that the board fits, drill holes for the LED and the antenna, and also for the power cable. We'll insert the grommet for the power cable, insert the antenna wire and the LED, add some caulking, and there you have it with the board in the box. The transmitter is complete. Before we go on to the receiver build, let's briefly discuss how we determine our antenna length. It's based on the famous equation C is equal to frequency times wavelength, with C being the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And of course we know our frequency is 315 megahertz. So we just divide the two and we come up with a wavelength of about 0.95 meters, approximately 1 meter. So that's the length that I'll use for my antennas. All right, now let's put together our receiver board. Now that our receiver is working, let's plug in the programming cable and program it and then turn it on and test it out. 
And there you go. It seems to be working. Now let's mount the receiver in a transparent box so we can see the screen. First we'll apply tape to protect the lid. And then we'll measure off where the LCD will go and mark it. And then we'll drill holes to mount the LCD. There you go. Clear off the burrs. And then check the fit. Mount the LCD onto the lid. Drill a hole for the switch. Clean off the burrs. Mount the switch. Drill a hole for the antenna. Put the whole thing together. There you have it. Everything fits very nicely. And it's up and running. This is where the transmitter will live at the back of the house. Conveniently close to the power outlet. You can see the black cable, which is the antenna. And then the receiver will go on the inside of the house on the other side of that window. Even though the system is transmitting temperature data from the sensor perfectly, I did notice some discrepancy in the data from the sensor when I compare it to the local forecast and other met methods of locally measuring the temperature. I think this is probably because the sensor is on the circuit board, close to the microprocessor, and inside the box, which may be heating up from the voltage regulator and the other electronics in there. So in the near future, I plan to take the sensor out of the box and use an external sensor, something like this one that I've made here. Before we close, I just wanted to make these final notes about the receiver and transmitter software, some last minute changes that I made to improve things. So if you see this code here I've added, basically what it does is it blinks a little asterisk symbol in the top right hand corner of the LCD display. And I did this because sometimes the temperature reading was so stable that it wasn't changing and you couldn't tell if new data was coming in or not. Anyway, I'll put this change and the changes to the transmitter code under the final code in the Instructable and you can find it there. Also, in order to increase the temperature reading accuracy, I made a couple of last minute tweaks to the transmit program. So I've added this line here, census dot set resolution to 12. So this sets the temperature sensor to a 12 bit resolution so it's more accurate. And I've added some delay here in the program. I've added a thousand milliseconds and here also after these readings of the sensor temperature in Fahrenheit and degree centigrade. And this also seemed to improve the accuracy somewhat. I'll keep working on it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and subscribe on YouTube and Instructables. Okay guys, see you in the next video.